Yeah, welcome to my video blog, um, Questions of Doubt in Corporate Valuation. My name is Bernhard Schwetzler, and our today's question of doubt is, again, is there anything special about negative free cash flows? We already had a simple version uh, that found out to this topic, that found out um, that by and large there is not too big of a problem uh, when negative free cash flows arise. Uh, in this session, we will dive a bit deeper and based on some theoretical findings, we will come to the conclusion, yes, there might be a problem and something special about negative free cash flows. In order to do so, we have to dig a bit deeper into the stochastic properties of the free cash flows or of the cash flows in general. Yeah? So you see here, this is uh, our perpetuity uh, valuation equation that we say that in the current point in time in zero, we have certain expectations about the future free cash flows based on our current knowledge that is denoted here by F0. Um, and uh, if we have a perpetuity, then we simply divide this uh, expected free cash flows by the WEC to arrive at the value of these free cash flows. Yeah? And of course, we may split the cash flows and uh, of course uh, arrive at exactly the same result if we first simply carve out the free cash flows expectation in one and discount it down over one period with a WAG and then take the free cash flows from two to infinity, discount them down with a WAG. That yields the value of this free cash flows in one. The cash flow starts in two and goes to infinity. So if we discount it, it's the value in one. And again, we discount this um, present value uh, with a wag over one period. Yeah? So finally, this equation may be decomposed into these two components, the expected value of the free cash flow in one and the expected value of the value of the free cash flows from two to infinity, which is here the value V1, both based on our current information and belief in zero. And these two are put together and then discounted here by the wake of a one period. Yeah? So what we did simply was here, the first equation number one, see here in this green box, we take all the free cash flows and discount it down. And the second step is simply splitting this cash flow into the cash flow in one and into the cash flow from two to infinity, then calculating the value of these second red box cash flows in one, and then sum up the value V1 and free cash flow in one and discount it down with a wake over one period. Yeah? So why did we do this exercise? Well, I hope that it shows that actually the value of the free cash flows that follows after one must have the same risk than the free cash flow itself. Yeah? So in that sense, here the, the value uh, of the future cash flow starting in two and going to infinity, if discounted with a wake, must also be a random variable and it must have the same risk uh, as the free cash flow because it is discounted with the same um, discount rate, the WAC. So this is best highlighted by a simple binomial model yeah, where uh, the current cash flow is then always transposed into a future cash flow by one up factor and one down factor. So we have just two states of the world. And you see here that this determines the two free cash flows and of course, uh, here, our values of the cash flows starting in two and going to infinity also must be state dependent for the two different states of the world up and down. Yeah? So technically, that means that this values of the cash flow starting in two and going to infinity, discounted down in one, must have the same covariance risk or the same beta factor than these uh, free cash flows in one themselves. Yeah? Otherwise, they, we were not allowed to use the same discount rate uh, to calculate their present values. Yeah? And technically, that means that, of course, as these free cash flows and additionally, the values uh, of the free cash flows after one are state dependent, that, of course, our expectations must be adjusted upwards or downwards, depending on whether the up or the down state of the world occur. You see here in the up states, we have a higher value of 
the cash flow starting in two and going to infinity than in the down state. Yeah? And that means that technically uh, our capital market participants adjust their beliefs according to which of the two states of the world um, are going to occur. Yeah? So in the up states, our expectations for the free cash flows after one are upwards adjusted. And if the down state occurs, then our expectations are adjusted downwards. Yeah? And our uh, adjustment depends on the deviation of these two state dependent free cash flow from its expected value uh, that we had at the beginning of this tree. Yeah? So you see here, the blue shaded area here is then our accumulated and complete expectation for all the cash flows after one, uh, after the down adjustment or the down uh, revised um, beliefs and expectations occur. Yeah? So this is behind our risk adjusted discounting of these two state dependent values uh, or of these uh, expected values drawn out of these state dependent values. So what does that mean? Um, that means, and this is a general equation that has uh, been brought forward by uh, two uh, researchers in Berlin, Lutz Kruschwitz and Andra Schlöffler, that you may link in general the next year's expectation or the next year's distribution uh, of the free cash flow to the this year's uh, realized cash flow by this multiplying it by one plus a random variable that is then here the growth rate uh, distribution of our free cash flows. Yeah? So in our simple binomial tree model, this uh, distribution of the uncertain growth rate simply is the positive growth rate, the higher growth rate is the up factor minus one, and the lower one is the down factor minus one. Yeah? So we have a positive and usually a negative um, realization in this distribution. So, and this uh, multiplicative link between the realized cash flow and the next year's cash flow, of course, also yields this equation here for the expected value, that the expected value uh, of next period's cash flow, given our expectations from this year, is that this year's realized free cash flow times one plus the expected value of the growth rate. So this is the expected growth rate. And here it becomes apparent what happens if we have a negative free cash flow. Yeah? Because unless our, our uh, expected growth rate does not fall drop below minus 100%, a negative realization of the free cash flow means that next year's expected free cash flow also turns negative. Yeah? And that means that, uh, of course, once we have a realization of a negative free cash flow, then if these distribution over the growth rate stays constant to infinity, then we will have from then on only negative free cash flows uh, in the expected value. Yeah? So you see here, this is just highlighted graphically, yeah? and this is clearly an undesirable um, property of this, of this uh, geometric random walk. You see here, so if we get underwater with this process for one, then for all periods that follow this period, we stay below uh, the zero line and have only negative expected values of the free cash flows. Yeah? On the other hand, the desirable property of this geometric random walk model is that, as you can see here, the far we go into the future, the higher the dispersion of the outcomes is here, again, simply highlighted with a binomial example. Yeah? And this is realistic. Yeah? I mean, the potential distribution and outcomes uh, of the free cash flow five years ago uh, is, of course, higher than the one uh, that we think is possible in the next year. Yeah? So, as I said already, as the free cash flow expectation in the next year, T plus one, is according to this geometric random walk, calculated by taking the realized free cash flow this period and multiply it by one plus the expected growth rate, then a negative free cash flow realization in T yields that the expected free cash flows in the next period are smaller than zero 
and in the perpetual model with a constant distribution of g all expected free cash flows beyond t turn negative due to this expectation adaption process yeah and that creates a problem yeah? especially a problem if we have to value startup companies that usually start with significant negative free cash flows and then hopefully turn into positive free cash flows again this change of sign is extremely difficult if not impossible to model with just one process uh, that links uh, the current free cash flows to the future ones yeah so a potential solution for the valuation of loss making firms or for startup firms is been proposed by schwarz and moon some years ago uh, and the idea is that you simply combine two different processes uh, that are geometric or adapted geometric processes one for sales and one for the cost and then you net the two against each other yeah so by doing this you avoid this problem that the process has to change sign itself the model is rather complicated and uh, rarely used in practice so what is left to say here is that yes there is a problem but usually only researchers and academians are concerned with that in practice do people do not care too much about this problem but for instance if you as a junior um, in an investment bank want to scare your boss then this might be worthwhile to be proposed to move to this model instead of the classic one that's it for today thank you